In the beginning of this year, I made the video talking about my top five stocks or ideas for 2023. And now that we are at year end, this is the perfect time to review my stock picks. So some picks have went really well, others don't. And that's why I'm doing this video. I want to roast my worst picks of this year. So as an investor, I do really believe that a good investor have to be able to look into their mistakes and learn from that. And that's the reason I'm doing this video. So this year has been really good for the stock market. The stock market is up a lot and I know it's easier to talk when the, the stocks are up so much as it is this year, but it's not the purpose. Uh, I'm really happy with my performance. Um, some of my picks went really well. Uh, I've achieved my goal that is beating all the major index, not only the S&P 500 or the MSI world. I want to beat Nasdaq every year and the last two years went really well. I've uh, beat all the index and uh, I'm up m more than that. So I'm really happy. So, but now let's talk about my stock picks. So first, when I look at my, my first stock pick for this year was Intel. My, my bullish thesis on that was that semiconductors have been trading really, have been trading lower in 2022 and were, were on the bear market. Uh, Intel was really on the value and it was um, um, a company that has having a lot of difficulty and it, I was expecting a rebound, a recover from that. US Chips Act and they, at the time they had a really high dividend. So uh, Intel, is up a lot this year so this was a, a really good choice for me intel is up uh 88 this year as like the all the other semiconductors so last year was really well to invest in semiconductors uh i do not own uh, intel anymore i just sold it, it last week or two weeks ago um close to 500 uh, 50 dollars uh because i do really believe the price of Intel stock um, um, is up a lot and I do not believe uh, that is not it's trading above the fair value for me right now a lot so uh, I do really believe that in the next few years it's not outperform the market because it has a really big recovery this year so but it was a really good pick so what was my second um, pick it was small caps this didn't went uh, well uh, i do really believe at the beginning of the year small caps were undervalued and it was but during this year small caps turned out to be even more undervalued so don one problematic was two companies i do really own at the time um but it did not went well for domo for example and pomatic it was okay it was up 23 uh, percent um during the year, I just got lucky with Domo, for example, actually it went well. When it hit uh, around that time, $70, I just sold my part because it, uh, in my opinion, it overextended and I was able to, to, to buy it at a really good profit. And uh, I do not own any more of these two companies, but it went well. Uh, but I do not believe their, uh, their um, business model anymore, Domo has slowed a lot their revenue growth and at the moment it's not uh, a good um, uh, investment for me uh, i do not believe on these two companies that will outperform the market bear in mind i always want to own companies that will outperform the market in the long term and this is not companies that uh, continue their growth there were small caps that are growing a lot but their revenue growth slowed a lot and almost not profit yet and uh, this year I tried to be into higher quality companies uh, and this is not a, a good pick for me at least. It went well, uh, I have to admit, uh, when I sold it I was able to sold these two companies at a profit, though at a real good profit, but uh, the year was not uh, good for these two picks, so it was, um, it was the, not the type of investor that I'm praising right now. So uh i do not believe this was a good investment it was a trade that went well for me and uh, i'm humble to to say that uh so my third uh, pick was big tech and everyone knows what happened with big tech this year it went up a lot my two biggest uh, um, picks was between alphabet and amazon 
Amazon is up 77%. Uh, Alphabet is up uh, almost 57%, which is really good. And uh, this is two companies I do still own it. Uh, another company that responsible for most of my gains this year was Matt. I was not my I was not believing on the company at the time, uh, but I do I do at the time I had uh, almost 10% of meta in my portfolio and it went it tripled this year. So, but talking about my stock picks, Alphabet and Amazon, they did outperform the market. I do believe Alphabet it's still a really good pick. Uh, they can um, it's one of the best companies and they are still at a really good price. Amazon not I did I do really believe they overextend a little bit, but I did reduce my position in Amazon, but uh, I still own it and it's still a really good position in my portfolio at the moment. Um, uh, my other pick was Chinese stocks and my bullish thesis was uh, China will start to boost their economy. Uh, they have low inflation, they are heading the economic cycle. Um, 2022 was a huge opportunity because uh, Chinese stock went down a lot. Uh, they are still undervalued in a conservative analysis and there is a positive trend. China was reopening and they have still uh, a really big upside. So my thesis was not wrong except for the China reopening. They did not reopen in the beginning of the year they are starting to recover but it is slowing it's not fast as expected and the chinese stocks are in the red this year so i'm down a lot on jd alibaba it's not down a lot but uh, i really took this opportunity to increase my position because this was a mistake chinese stock was a mistake uh, a lot of investors say it's a mistake investing in china but when i look into it i'm looking to Will the Chinese economy uh, start to uh, to to not growing fast? They are still growing fast. Uh, will Chinese companies not be profitable? They are being profitable. They are increasing their profit. They are making a lot of money. They are still really undervalued. In my opinion, Chinese stocks at the moment are more undervalued than it was uh, last year so i do still believe in this company i'm reviewing my thesis and uh, i still believe it but for this year it was uh, a mistake uh, the stocks are down a lot chinese stocks um i'm not down most and i still i was able to to still beat uh, all the major index because on china i took the opportunity and i found pinduoduo and <laughs> i'm up a lot this year because um uh, the unrealized losses I have with the Bob or JD and Tencent, for example, uh, I have more unrealized gains on uh, Pinduoduo than I have losses in the other three and still plenty of uh, gains. So overall, shiny stocks uh, on my portfolio went positive and for a really good margin because of Pinduoduo and uh, I adapt and uh, in the middle of the year I was praising in this channel about Pinduoduo and has been a really good investment this year. So my last pick was Stone Co and Stone Co was a Brazilian stock um, like China investment like to invest in, in Brazil for example but Brazilian stock was, were never been so underground in their history. Uh, Buffett was an owner, uh, Berkshire at this case. They hit an all-time high of $92 in February and a low in May of $7, which is a really big drawdown. In my opinion, Stone Co was uh, really under undervalued um, and uh, they are profit, a growth stock and uh, this year. My thesis was really right. Um, all I've said that uh, turns out to be true and this year was a really good year for Stone Co. They continue to grow a lot. Uh, uh, turning to be really profit at the moment and uh, they are uh, starting to be on favor on investing this year stone co is up a hundred and and uh twelve percent hundred and thirteen percent so it was uh, another stock that uh, uh, helped me to achieve my goals in the stock market i'm up a lot more than double um I did uh, increase my position during the year when the stock was under $10 and I have a really good position. And at the moment, Stone Co, it's one of my 
favorite companies, one of my biggest holdings. I, I do really believe this pick <laughs> was good, uh, but this is what happened during this year. This was my stock picks. Um, I had really bad stock picks, for example, Domo and Pumatki, that were trades that went well, but it was a mistake, and I have to admit that. Um, Chinese stocks did not went well, uh, and uh, my thesis is still being right. Uh, I do still believe in that, and uh, it is another pick for my for my 2024 year, uh, and I continue to believe that. But it, the picks I had in my video did not went well, and that's okay uh, because and uh, you will not um, be right in every pick you do, and you have to look into that, uh, look into your mistakes and trying to learn from that. And that's what I'm trying to do with Chinese stocks. But uh, I continue to believe in that thesis. So that's why I still hold it. And Stone Cold was a major uh, pick for me. And it was really good big tech as well. Uh, in, and semiconductors as well, for example. So that's why my portfolio outperformed the market. But uh, I could achieve that. I have really good gains even though i have some mistakes and that's why you have to try to diversify your portfolio a little bit even though i don't believe in big diversification but i always try to find the best opportunities out there uh doing videos for you guys to show what i do believe what my thesis are and this year was really good and i hope next year will be even better but it's gonna be really difficult because the market are overextending some gains a lot but that is my video talking about my uh, top five stock picks I have done in the beginning of this year. I hope you find this video hopeful. And if you like to this video, please like and subscribe, guys. See you next time.